I know there are parents watching and they, they get concerned about what their kids are doing. What advice would you give parents of kids, uh, uh, to how to talk to kids about their careers and jobs? What, what's something they could, would be useful? Well, I, I, think, I think one thing that is always useful is for parents to listen to their kids. And, well, tell me, tell me what kinds of things you are enjoying doing. Uh, uh, you know, wh wh why do you like that? What the, are, 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 do you like the people? Do you like the activity? What, what are you doing there that's, uh, that's, that's fun? What are you doing that's fun? And uh, I would never ask them, what are you going to be when you grow up? Mm -hmm. uh, but, but it doesn't hurt to, to talk about uh, interests, the things that you like to do and the things that are fun to do. Uh, but the other thing I would say is uh, make sure your kid gets a job mm. because you learn so much when you're working. It, and yeah, but that won't be a very good job. Uh, maybe, a, maybe a dishwasher at uh, McDonald's. Mm -hmm. So what? It's a job. It pays money. You have a chance to, uh, to experience what it's like to uh, work with other people and to uh, get along with other people. And uh, you learn what the boss likes to see, see? The mm -hmm. boss wants to see happy customers. So if you're a dishwasher, you want to make sure all those plates are clean. And if you're serving hamburgers over the counter, you want to make sure that you make the customers feel welcome. Mm -hmm. and, and you probably you, learn a lot about yourself too, right? What you're good at, what, what you're, you're good at, what you're what you're not so good at, and what you need to learn to be better. And you might even go up to the boss and say, you know, uh, I'm kind of wondering what kind of problems you have here, being the manager here at this mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. outfit. Uh, uh, what 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 could I do to be of more help to you? Mm -hmm. okay. So so th this is a way of of learning firsthand what it's like to work. Mm -hmm. And you have to, you, in order to really be a good employee, you have to add value to a, a, a company or mm -hmm. an outfit, an organization. You have to give them more than they pay you. Because otherwise they're not going to pay you. The reason, only reason they pay you is because you're doing something valuable for them. You have to know what is valuable for them. Okay. How about, although I'm sure this is somewhat related, advice you'd give to career counselors? Uh, so, you know, uh, maybe a mistake they make or something that to help people who are coming to them for guidance. Well, yes, I do have some advice. <laughs> I thought you would. <laughs> uh, but I'm sure you're already doing it, Steve, in your work. Uh, but, uh, you see, I, I don't think we, we should be trying to help people make a career decision. See, that's not, that, that is... For a hundred years, that has been the job of career counselors, is to have people make a career decision in advance. See, I think what you should be helping people do is, let's help you find some work that you will enjoy and have fun doing. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you may not want to do it next week or next month or next year, but it's something to get you started. And, 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 and let's, let's figure out what kind of questions you should ask once you get that job. And, uh, but, but it might depend on what the job is. So let's, let's work on finding you some kind of work to do. It could be volunteer work. Maybe you could go to the Red Cross and volunteer your services. Um, you know, the uh, hurricane, I mean, the uh, <laughs> hurricane, earthquake in, uh, in Haiti mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. is uh, providing uh, opportunity for people to do a whole bunch of things that they have had no idea that they would ever do in their so whole again, life. So it's, again, it's more, I'm getting the sense from me, it's more of an adventure, trying things on, yes. not overly judging them, being open. Is exactly, that what I'm exactly. Getting out there and doing things and meeting people and helping people and, uh, and keeping your eyes open for alternatives mm -hmm. uh, all the time. So um, let me ask you um, a question about the person in mid-career, okay? Because I, I, I run into this as, as, mm -hmm. as, uh, as a career coach. Someone who's maybe mm, in their 40s, they've been doing what they've been doing for maybe 20 years. Uh, uh, they're not completely happy with it. Um, they ha have some pressure of a family. How can they best use happenstance? Uh, I kind of understand it from the beginning as a, as a young person how to do that. But when they're out in the middle, how would you say they go about using this methodology to find something else and not and be able to still take care of business you know 
Well, the, people often get uh, trapped uh, into a job because they feel they need to have the money to pay the mortgage, and uh, they get, they get uh, trapped that way. Uh, and feel, at least they feel trapped. Uh, <clears throat> but, you know, <clears throat> the, the gen same general principles apply. See, even say a guy in his mid-40s and he's working for some uh, bank, let us say, as a, uh, a manager for uh, one of the uh, things, and, and he said, oh gosh, I, I really hate doing this. Well, he should be keeping his eyes open for options too. Uh, maybe there are some other kinds of jobs in that same company. Maybe there are other banks that could use his experience. But he has to let people know in a subtle way sometimes, that, there, that, that, that he is open to alternatives and that, uh, that if, if, he, uh, if he needs a certain level of income, why, uh, then that's part of one of the things that he's looking for. Maybe he wouldn't want to take something that he'd have to take a 50% mm -hmm. cut in pay. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's his personal choice because there's some people that are willing to take a 50% cut in pay in order to, to get out of this work that, he, that they hate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is personal choice, see? Mm -hmm. and, and, and the career counselor can be a personal counselor as well as a career counselor because you get people to talk about the, all of the factors that are influencing their mm -hmm. lives. Mm -hmm. In fact, in one of your recent articles, you were talking about transitions that a, uh, a career counselor could help people through multiple sorts of transitions. Exactly, exactly. And I, and I think career counselors should. I don't think they should confine their work just to uh, talking about jobs. Yeah, and I was thinking one way for them to experiment is maybe to do something on the weekends or try something in spare time when not fully commit to it or maybe when they're on, if they can take an extended vacation, something where exactly. you're trying it out before try you fully out. commit. Yes. That's, that's, uh, that's one of the uh, bits of advice is uh, uh, try out, test your dream <laughs> okay. one step at a time. Sure, weekends is a good way to do it, part time. Uh, if you're interested in teaching, you might want to volunteer to teach a course about banking at the uh, adult education school. Yeah, or volunteer to train maybe uh, some... Yeah, or train some ne uh, neophytes in the uh, field. So how about, um, how about passion? You have a section in your book where you talk about cultivating passion for work. Or, um, there's a lot of people that are... Does this fit in the same way that you try to stay open for possibilities? How do you get the passion for work? Well... The way, all right, how do you get a passion for work? Okay, I have a passion for my work now. Mm -hmm. Because, why do I have a passion? Because I think it's important and because I'm having fun doing it. I get invited to talk on TV shows with <laughs> inter interesting people like you. So, so I am having a ball uh, and I have a passion now for my work. But did I have it when I started? No. See, I think that the mistake is that you think you should have a passion. See? And I think a passion is learned from what you do and how you feel about what you do after you do it for a while. So you build a passion, you learn a passion, you don't start with a passion. And you make some course corrections along the way. Part of being open is, I don't quite like this. Is that what yes, you're saying? Yes, course corrections all the way along the way. You don't have to make a gigantic leap into a completely new field. Well, you know what? It, the time flew by. I had more questions for you, but we're going to have to have you back yet a third time. Maybe not four years from now, like the, the last, or was it five? Thank you hey, so much for being on the show. It's fun. It's Thank fun you. talking with you, Steve. Uh, I really enjoy talking with you as well. Thank you for watching You're Hired. If you have any input for us about this show or suggestions for future shows, questions about jobs and careers, feel free to email me at steve at bayareacareercoach.com. Again, it's steve at bayareacareercoach.com. Do check out the website for the 12 keys to getting a great job. Sign up for my free career newsletter. Find out about career coaching. And also, we have the contact information for all the people that have been on the show, and we want them to buy the book, right? Luck is no accident, making the most of happenstance in your life and career. Thank you for very much for watching, and we'll catch you next time on Your Hired. Thank you so much, John, for being on the show. I was, I was also going to ask you about um, people later in life as, they, as they're looking to make the transition, but I guess it would be more of the same. It is more.